One of the things that, uh, that I discovered in, in studying uh, musicians in Texas, jazz musicians, uh, even going back to the, the blues and, the, and boogie woogie and ragtime, is that uh, many times musicians develop because of the railroad. The links of the railroad uh, throughout the state, uh, the stops where they would go, you, you would have blacks working on the railroad. This was one uh, form of employment that they could find jobs in. Uh, not very many industries they could find work in. Even, even uh, in the panhandle, uh, I think there were, there were train routes going up that way uh, through New Mexico and out to California. And everywhere the railroad went, uh, especially boogie-woogie, musicians traveled and they would find work. They even played uh, on the trains. Uh, um, I don't remember exactly how that worked, but they did actually have uh, cars where they had a, a, a piano, I think. Uh, I, again, some of these things that have, uh, have escaped me over the years. I, it's been uh, uh, about 25 years since I, I worked on that book. Um, a musician who can find work close to where he's already working, is that's beneficial. So if you were working in Dallas and you could find a gig in Fort Worth, that's pretty close. If you were working in Austin and you could find a gig in San Marcos or in San Antonio, um, or even up to, even up to Dallas, it's not prohibitively terrible. But um, you know, there's there's not too many places where you can go from Midland, Odessa. That's a that's a hop, skip, and a jump where you could find another job. So there weren't people that are hanging out there. There was no recording industry. There was no uh, there, there there was no black intelligentsia. And jazz is an intellectual music. Whatever you want to say, these guys who play jazz, you listen to them talk. You know, guys like guys like uh, uh, Count Basie and Duke Ellington and uh, uh, Buddy Tate, Teddy Wilson. Teddy Wilson was a very literate man. And I think, and 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 as as were a number of these other guys, they lived in New York. They were around smart people. They learned how to be, you know, conversant. In society, um, I don't know that you could have gotten that in even if the, even if the opportunities existed in Midland and Odessa, just because there were there were a lot of societal barriers for musicians to play this kind of music. So many of the jazz musicians uh, of, born in Texas uh, had to leave the state to find work, uh, and so many of them ended up in California, and this was true of a whole group that were sort of associated with uh, North Texas State uh, University. This was when it was not even a uh, university, it was a college, and uh, there was not a jazz program there as such when Jimmy Jufrey, also from the uh, Dallas area, and uh, Harry Babason, a uh, bass player, uh, as well as Herb Ellis were, were in that group. Uh, Harry Babason, I only learned uh, in recent years, uh, was born in Dallas, but uh, actually grew up in Vernon, uh, where uh, Jack Teagarden was from. But uh, uh, speaking again about uh, distances um, and, the, and the railroad, uh, Yes, you can, you can hook up uh, so many of the cities through the rail system, but in the West, in West Texas, you, you just can't get there. As my dad said, you can't get there from here. Uh, so the, the difficulty uh, of going to a place like Midland, Odessa, would be difficult for the musicians. Uh, it really wouldn't be worth their while, and, and with no audience to speak of, uh, this, this would be very difficult unless some group like the West Texas Party uh, came up with this idea and, and invited uh, some of these uh, great names uh, like Herb Ellis and uh, Buddy Tate. Buddy Tate, uh, of course, uh, was one, a major figure in the Count Basie uh, Orchestra and played with so many other 
groups. Uh, Bud Johnson was so important to the uh, uh, a number of the bands uh, during the swing era, especially he was considered the straw boss of the uh, 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 Father Hines uh, Orchestra. Uh, so these Texans uh, left the state, found work in the major orchestras, recorded uh, uh, were involved in recording some of the greatest hits of all uh, of jazz history. We can just name them off. Uh, so uh, the the problem of uh, being able to make a living in j in jazz, even if you were from Dallas or Houston or San Antonio, uh, so imagine trying to make a living in Midland, Odessa. Uh, with, uh, again, the problem that the people didn't know the music. Uh, if they did, they were in a vast minority because most of the people were listening to uh, later rock and roll, but earlier, uh, the closest they would get would probably be West Western Swing, uh, but mostly country uh, music. So uh, the likelihood of their being able to either hear music or to support uh, musicians it would be virtually impossible. The Odessa Midland dynamic has always fascinated me that, you know, Midland as far as oil goes, is where the executives are, uh, where the businesses are. And Odessa was where the workers are, the roughnecks, the blue collar town. And each has very much a very strong, distinct personality. And for this to start in Odessa, <laughs> uh, who would have thunk it? I would have thought, you know, this was more of a, you know, a white collar uh, uh, interest. To think that uh, someone like Pee Wee Irwin or Buddy Tate or uh, Teddy Wilson would end up in middle and Odessa playing. The only way jazz could subsist in Texas was the way many musics, the only way they could subsist before there were commercial ventures, and that's the house party. But on the jazz level, it was a very sophisticated thing. It wasn't just a house party, uh, push back the furniture, roll back the rug, invite your friends over and pass around the hat. There was money involved. Imagine the people in middle and Odessa being able to talk to these people and to see how brilliant they were, not only as musicians, but as, as cultured figures who had traveled the world, many of them. Amazing. people were imported from long distances away. So this was, you know, this was basically importing culture to a place that was devoid of this particular culture. It was not anything you could tell someone that didn't live here what it was all about. You had to see it to believe it could happen. And to have had that experience, I mean, Midland Odessa was very, very fortunate. You know, the Permian Basin for 
at least one weekend a year became one of the coolest jazz spots in the world. 